In this video we will detail the history of the legendary American Pitbull Plumbers Champion Alligator. Kick back get a bag of popcorn, grab a drink, roll up a swisher and I hope you guys enjoy. Alligator was not the coordinator's first choice. He was big and quite an ugly sight so. They obtained Satin Lady from Maurice Carver of Fort Worth and she was big, black, and very pretty. However, they really didn't care much about her as an individual. She was one of these scatterbred dogs Maurice was famous for. Unlike most of the Carver dogs she was cold. When he wanted to breed her, Mr. Williams traveled to Wichita Falls, Texas, to mate her with Tudor's old N-Bomb dog, who was owned at the time by J.E. King. N-Bomb was some of the last of Tudor's old bloodlines and had been on several hundred yards before King acquired him. Alligator, who was a magnificent dog, had two siblings that were at least as good if not better than him, says the breeder. Soko and Susan Renee were two wonderful bulldogs and were really good at their jobs. Mr. Williams kept Alligator until he was over a year old so that he could breed him back to his dam and Soko had shown how great she was with the little plumber just when she became a little older. When they bought him, I was certain they had an albatross, because he was so big. I figured they would never be able to get him hooked up. But then I saw how well he fit right in and how well he seemed to work out with this team. His potential is now limitless. It must have been during a time when there were some really good dogs, and I don't think anybody would have predicted that this dog who was so big and ugly looking would produce any special results. When the plumbers had such a great group of dogs, they expected everything to be fast lane. They had better rolled dogs than most people, and always looked for action. Throughout their lives they were limited in the quality of training they were offered, which made them tough on their dogs. They were great dogmen but would crash out the dogs. They were always bragging about how their dogs were either ace or near ace, and they often disregarded the fact that not all dog breeds had the same speed, intelligence or body type. Gator was started out on dogs that were smaller than he was, and most of them could immediately sense his dominance. There were also a number of uphill battles. Alligator Jr. had never been called on to get his oil checked, despite the fact that he had even had a chance to do so before. The plumber's first reaction was concern because they hadn't seen him run over the competition often enough lately and they knew he never hesitated when asked if he wanted any work done on. One chap came by their tutor home, and during the course of the conversation said he didn't think much of their old black dog. He offered to, and subsequently did, wager that Zeke here could take him out with one move. The plumbers heard the bet and quickly agreed to it. The man who thought Zeke could win, lost his money when Alligator defeated him in a second. As the stranger left, he made a statement that always holds true in the bulldog world. You sure can't tell one by how they look. They asked for a perfect damp dummy dog to confirm that Alligator was the real deal. It is often thought that crossing any two breeds whether they be loose bred or pure will give birth to a cur, so the alligators did everything they could. When they got to Trussell's, they made Alligator run on the treadmill for half an hour then walk around for 15 minutes before running with Dumb Dumb the bigger dog in the roll pit. They made it last half an hour. It was nip and tuck and Alligator went across when he shouldn't have on wobbly legs. This roll turned out to be a pretty good game test for Dumb Dumb too. When asked how it turned out, Trussell said, the black dog gave Dummy everything he wanted. The next match for Alligator was against a dog of the same weight. This was at one of Maurice's big league open shows, they appeared to be in brilliant shape and were fighting each other with a fast pace. Alligator went to the legs with Bryant's dog Satin swapping it out and going from legs to nose, then getting into Alligator's stifle, where they swapped it out. A turn was called on Satin at 26 minutes. The handler made a handle at 30 minutes, and Satin got another turn after that last handle. A hurricane was about to make landfall, and with Alligator already on the ropes, Satin just needed to stay standing for 45 minutes. As soon as that time had passed and the referee counted down Satin's brave stand, Alligator became champion of the match. In his next fight, Alligator faced Jack at catch weight. Alligator came in 60 pounds heavier and immediately took control of the match, pounding on Jack and inflicting heavy damage for over 20 consecutive minutes. Alligator was exhausted from the end of the bout. Alligator was a strong dog and it's becoming more of an even fight as 30 minutes pass. Jack is also a very practiced competitor and was never matched in strength, you can see he is losing energy and looking far away. Alligator has started to come onto the top and catch up to Jack. During the earlier part of the match, Bobby Ickle had commented on Alligator may have met his match and Jimmy Job turned and said to me, as Alligator was being trashed like a stepchild, that if Jack was game and keeps this up, old Alligator could be in trouble. As the match was winding down Bobby Ickle said, old Jack looks like he has bout had it, and sure enough in just the hour mark he takes the count. I went over to check on the jack dog and offer any assistance I could and I noticed his stomach and chest. I could see what had made the difference in this match and it was the punishment alligator had dished out from the bottom and it was unbelievable. I heard later that Jack lived out his life in luxury after Alligator ended his ring career. There was some time after this match, as no one wanted any of the Alligator dog, so during a roll session at the plumber's place, the Cadells showed up with several to school. 
These boys had some old time stuff the old man had been breeding for years and some were sure solid, from the Leitner Colby stuff. They had a male named Jeff that was a big spotted dog, too big for everything on the place except alligator. So he was taken off the chain to oblige the Jeff dog. This dog was the closest thing to alligator's equal that I saw during his career. The role ended early due to a bleeder being hit on gator. Jeff went to the Midwest where he did very well and where I heard he made champion. When the plumbers had about given up on another official match, word came from Oklahoma that a man named Brown had one he would run at the alligator dog. Up to then, several had fallen through, but this one came off and as they say in the dogs these boys brought a paddle for the plumber's ass. They had done their homework and rather than a punisher, they brought one that not only could punish but was versatile and smart. This dog could have whipped alligator and on another day might have. The dogs were conditioned by two of the best conditioners of the day, alligator by Burton and Joker by Fox. The match was males at 57 pounds and Oklahoma Shorty was the referee. The dogs hit an alligator takes the bottom but is coming up from time to time and being frustrated by Joker's style, that had never been too effective on him with the defensive dogs he had met earlier in his life. A turn was called on Joker at 25 minutes, but a handle was not made until 52 minutes and Joker scratches strong. Alligator has started to dominate the match by the hour mark. At an hour 9, Alligator is screaming from his corner to scratch and is showing what he is said to be famous for, killer instinct and you can plainly see he plans to finish the job if allowed to do so. At an hour 12, Joker takes the count. We all agree, we have just witnessed two of the best big dogs to ever come down the pike and what a show they put on. The plumbers are quick to commend Mr. Brown and Mr. Fox on bringing an excellent dog in top condition. They also say they plan on retiring the old warrior, know that he is officially a champion. As I look back, I can only recall a 10 heavyweights that were ever in Alligator's League. Hooten's butcher boy, Samson, Alligator's half-brother, were two lifelong rivals that ended each other's careers. Besides being a fierce combat dog, Alligator was really well behaved and enjoyed attention. He had an easy temperament and I won't forget when he tried to play with a cat. This story goes further than Alligator himself and must include his littermates and both his and their offspring. There are many breeds that have stood the test of time but the most important dogs a person should remember are likely these good dogs. They haven't been so popular for long but they still make an impact on today. While these good dogs were never mass-produced, they still stand alongside other well-known breeds. I have never been overly sentimental about my dogs, but have had a few of these dogs that were special to me. When it comes to the alligators in my experience, I think the most impressive trait are how well they cross with other good breeds of dogs. We are all looking for that something special and sometimes it's a dog with some great genes. Make sure you guys subscribe to channel, press the bell icon to receive all video notifications from the channel. Don't forget to ring the doorbell by smashing that like button, share the video, and comment. Thanks for watching.